Ah, the Dragon Kingdom. Peaceful, beautiful, serene, and under attack by Dr. Eggman. Welcome everybody to my review of Sonic Universe 39. This is the third part of the scrambled arc that stars good old Dr. Eggman. And we find him in the Dragon Kingdom because that's where he tracks Nibley to. And he is talking to the Grandmaster, uh, Conquering Storm. And she explains that her clan is, has been strong for generations and pretty much they don't need the cybernetics. I mean, she allowed herself to get cybernetics for the sake of her clan. But Eggman, being who he is, well, he wants them all to be cyborgs. And, Stor and Conquering Storm says it goes against their philosophy, but Eggman doesn't give a flying flip. He demands them all get legionized, or else he'll wipe them off the map. And then, of course, he asks what happened to the Iron King. And he hasn't been seen since he was uh, blown away by that big fan in Sonic the Hedgehog 211. And of course, Eggman wants to know where Snively is, and they haven't and they haven't seen him, seen him presently. No, presently. Of course, Eggman leaves. But then the one of the ninjas asks Conquering Storm that the little guy was here earlier taking something taking some armor but the storm replied that uh, that was in the past <sighs> so uh, yeah hey man why do you keep hiring these people that can stab you in the back at the first chance <sighs> I get again according to Eggman it's all part of the game yeah <sighs> anyway we go to the well and basically, uh, Lu Fang, that weird bunny mutant thing that we've met before. I mean, he's not a bunny rabbit. He's, I mean, Bunny is a rabbit. Cream and Vanilla, they're rabbits. But Archie says he and he's a rabbit. I don't get it. Well, whatever. Anyway, he's delivering the meal to the Iron Queen, who's still at the bottom of the well. However, Snively appears with his cloaking device and uh, ambushes the guard and decides to uh, deliver the meal himself personally by lowering himself in the well bucket. And he thought he could get a nice little meal with Regina before Eggman catches up to him. Now, you would think that good old uh, Iron Queen would welcome Snively back with open arms. But, you know the saying about women scorn? Yep. She is not happy to see him. Uh, well, for good reason. I mean, she blatantly states that, well, when things got fell apart, he ran straight back to Eggman, leaving her pretty much uh, a prisoner, and uh, which led to her being in the current predicament of being stuck in the bottom of the well. And of course, Snively tries to explain his plan, but uh, Regina would not hear of it, and she and she would rather stay here at the bottom of the well than be embarrassed by Snively again. Uh, and Snively decides to haul himself back up. And during this whole little dramatic scene, Snively's uh, bum is stuck in uh, stuck inside the bucket. <laughs> so. Of course, Snively thought he failed again, but until he saw, until he sees good old Eggman starting his invasion, and then, of course, Snively says, "That's it. I'm going to, I'm going. To, the plan will work. It will succeed. I will save my love." Ugh. And so then he runs away into the forest for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, good, of course, the invasion of Stormtop Village begins. Egg pawns are appearing everywhere. And good old Monkey Boy shows up to help restore order. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, Eggman, Orbot, and Cubot, who, by the way, have their own little Eggmobiles. That's, just, that's actually kind of cool, really. 
really. <clears throat> are noticing that uh, there's some resistance in the form of good old Monkey Con. And of course, um, good old Monkey Boy spies on. Uh, well, I spy. <clears throat> sees Eggman because, well, ever since uh, Eggman got a hold of his family in the past, well, Khan's life has been pretty miserable. I mean, first turned into a cyborg, then the Eggman blowing up villages that he's been trying to protect. Jeez. Guys had rough. Eggman is actually surprised to see Monkey Khan here. And Orbot pretty much accessed the files because, well, as we all know, during that whole Iron Dominion saga, Eggman has pretty much been in a straitjacket. Well, pretty much Orbot reveals that uh, Monkey Con here has uh, feelings for a certain princess of the Acorn House. And guess what, folks? Eggman decides to unleash Mecha Sally on uh, Monkey Con. Of course, Con is so shocked that uh, Sally's now a robot, and then they begin to fight each other. And Con, being st he still has feelings for Sally, and he doesn't want to damage her. But regardless, it kept it kept Con distracting while Eggman proceeds into the village. Oh, and. Here's this little funny thing that happens right here. <laughs> he begins singing his own theme song. Love it. That's so great. So, um, Eggman threatens the cap captured villagers to uh, pretty much either tell me where the Iron Queen is, and if you don't, I will kill one of you. And of course, immediately one of them blabs out, "She's in the, she's in the well." Of course, which uh, ruins Eggman's fun. So he makes up for it by uh, taking by taking the prisoners to the prison eggs and burning down the village. Wow. Well, don't mess with Eggman. So uh, yeah, Monkey Con and Sally Mecha Sally are continuing to fight. And of course, Eggman proceeds to the well where she where he decides to have a little chit chat with Regina. And, uh, well, basically it reveals here that of all the sub-bosses that he had, he would rather have Regina take over the Empire instead of a Mobian. Wow, that's really racist, but I'm not, well, in a way I'm not surprised because of uh, his background. But then, of course, um, he keeps on, keeps on blabbing that, he, that she had potential. But then, of course, the techno magic thing kind of ruined it for him because he doesn't believe in that mumbo jumbo sciencey thing. And then, of course, he asks where Snively is, and well, through conversation, although not direct, she somewhat says, "Well, Eggman guessed that he was here, but he left." And then, of course, Eggman, being the ever-loving dictator he is. Kind of mocks her like, how could he? How could that little twerp ever loved you? And of course, uh, that face on Regina is like, I, I don't know what to read her face. Is it concern, like sadness? Wow, it's actually kind of deep stuff when you think about it, folks. Anyway, over the course of the fight, eventually Mecha Sally loses power. And it turns out that the fight between Khan and S Mecha Sally actually drained the power ring that was uh, powering her. And she only has a few minutes of reserve power left. And when that runs out, she's essentially dead. So, uh, of course, um, Eggman pretty much tells Khan that she needs a power ring or else she's dead. And again, Khan still has feelings for Sally pretty much sacrifices his powering crown to reactivate Mecha Sally. And then the first thing she, do, she does when reactivate is uh, choke Khan on the... like, grab him by the throat. And of course, now that he no longer has his powering crown, he is now susceptible to mind control again. And just so happens that Eggman ordered Orban to... Uh, Remote pilot his Eggmobile straight to him because he just so happens to have a special control crown and by placing it on Khan's head, 
Well, he's now under Eggman's control. <sighs> oh, poor Monkey Con. <sighs> the butt monkey. I mean, literally. He gets controlled by Regina who knows how many times. And now under control of Eggman again. <sighs> oh, well. I'm not sad. I'm not sad about this, folks, are you? Whatever. Okay, so everything's going good for Eggman. However, he still cannot locate Snively. But and all their forces are accounted for. However, there's this big old rumbling sound coming towards Eggman. And, and I just love this face right here. It just means, oh dear, or and then the reason he's oh dearing is this thing this big old hunk of armor that Snively somehow manages to get out of the Iron Fortress uh, and, and earlier uh, how do you get that big three how do you get that big thing through the gate I, I, I just ugh. for those with sharp eyes we, we've actually seen this armor before back in issue 37 when Cochrane Storm was about to be beamed up to the Death Egg we see in this far corner that there is that iron armor waiting and yeah like the foreshadowing. Anyway, he had, this thing is called the Iron Oni, according to the uh, previews for the next issue. And uh, basically, what it does, it tries to trample Eggman. It takes out uh, Khan and Mecha Sally using trees, so uh, they're out of commission, at least for the rest of this issue. I don't know about next issue. And it just rips that well opening up and. It actually surprised the Iron Queen that uh, <laughs> he would show up in this big old thing. And he declares that I have done this for you. I have screwed up the egg legions. I have I braved gun and I secured a big old machine for you, my sweetie. And I did this all for you. Oh, boy. And then, of course, uh, she is actually surprised that she really did come back for him like he did come back for her and oh boy folks we'll warn you now shield your eyes because this next picture is not gonna be pretty Ugh. oh that's not right now oh, uh, that's wrong on so many levels I mean, I don't mind kissing and stuff, but with Snively, I mean, look at needle nose and short guys. I mean, yeah, everybody deserves love, but uh, ugh, I mean, that's not right. And and I love this reaction right here. Eggman's like, I chased you all all over the world for this, and like Orbot and Cubot share my sentiment, and like or and Cubot's like trying to hide his eyes from it. It's like, Ugh, I don't want to see that. Or, or I mean. Ugh. Anyway, after Snively and Regina kiss ugh, and make up, they're sicking that giant piece of armor at Eggman, and Eggman at this point regains his composure. He seems unfazed because he probably has a trick or two, two up his sleeve, and that's where the is issue ends. So yeah, next issue is uh, Eggman versus Snively. And hopefully uh, it's going to be a satisfying conclusion to this great arc, but we'll see. So this issue, um, it's like uh, this issue pretty much undoes a bunch of the things that the Iron Dominion did. Because, uh, well, the free people as of now are uh, being captured by Eggman. I mean, they're no longer free. Um, Khan is now under the control of Eggman, which kind of, which, uh, again, I, I'm kind of indifferent to it because, um, yeah. I mean, he's okay. He got good development during the Iron Dominion arc, but, um, yeah. But this is the Eggman arc. The Eggman arc. Again, Eggman, Orbot, and Cubot are the true stars of this arc. I'm sorry. And, 
Of course, this issue is actually the payoff to a major buildup that started actually all the way back in the, uh, like in the Iron Dominion arc, like, uh, when Eggman and Snively were getting away. He, Snively said, can we go back for Regina? I mean, can we, can we go back to here? And Eggman's like, no. And then Eggman keeps, uh, telling Snively, no, we're not getting your girlfriend. And of course... Snively started playing behind his back again, but this time to uh, steal to get uh, Regina back and pretty much uh, take over the Empire again. But do you think he'll succeed this time? Do you really think Snively will succeed? I mean, does he stand a chance? Um. Well, I don't know. I can't tell the future, but. Of course, this is a Sonic book, and Sonic and Eggman must always fight, because in the Sega games, Sonic and Eggman always fight each other, and, well, I don't know what's going to be the outcome of this fight. They did say some surprises, but, uh, I hope the surprises are worth it. Again, Jamal Pepper's, um, pretty much a pencil B issue, and... I like how uh, the uh, Snively, like, between uh, the Iron Queen and the Snively then, and the Iron Queen and the Snively now, like, like in issue 202, which was uh, Pepper's first uh, issue, the backup issue, he drew uh, Snively and Regina kind of weird-ish, as, and as you can see here, he actually improved on the model slightly, so, um, yeah, one more thing, Cubot's voice always changes in each issue of this arc. In the first issue, he talks like a cowboy, the second, he talks like a gangster, and in this one, he talks like a pirate, just like in Sonic Colors. And, well, does this mean in the final issue of this arc, will he have his normal, loud, squealing voice? I mean, his high-pitched, normal voice? Thank you, buddy! Hey, my voice! It's bad! Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. So anyway, so anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this uh, review. Oh, the I forgot my grade. Uh, I'm gonna give it a well. I'm gonna give it a, pretty much a uh, nine out of ten because of uh, you'll probably guess where my one point where I subtracted the point. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna show that anymore. Okay. So anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed my review, and uh, I'll see you next time. And yes, folks, I'm aware that um, I've been trying to work on my uh, retro reviews, and that's going to take, it's taking longer than expected because of, well, I have other things going on in my life right now, so. They're, they're coming, folks. I have not forgotten about them. So, anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed my review, and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Eggman, you magnificent dictator! I've read your book!